George Berman. Mr. Premier, George Berman. There he is. Thank you for coming. George, come on over here. George Berman was born in Lodz, Poland in 1923. During the war, he endured harsh conditions in the Lodz ghetto and Auschwitz and Gorlitz concentration camps. Working as a slave laborer, he survived several beatings, a gunshot wound, attacked by dogs, and pneumonia. And after escaping from the death march, he became a walking skeleton, living on grass soup and sawdust bread. After the war, George studied electronics in Cardiff, Wales, and married Mona there, and in 1956, they immigrated to Canada. In Toronto, George first worked at the warehouse at Canadian General Electric. He later worked with, their, with them on communication systems for police and ambulance services, CN Rail, telephone companies, and other industries. Some of his designs were early predecessors of today's cell phone. For more than a decade, George has spoken about his show experience at schools and community events. He has four children, seven grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. George Fox, if you could please come to the Premier's side. Ladies and gentlemen, George Fox was born in the Ukraine in 1917. After his father was killed, George's family moved to Brezhny, Poland. After being severely wounded while serving in the Polish army during the war, George returned to Brezhny. In 1940, the Nazis forced the Brezhny Jews into a ghetto where they were systematically starved. Later in Auschwitz, Dr. Mengele directed George one way and his mother the other way. The other way was directly to the gas chambers where his mother was killed. In 1946, George married Fanny. They immigrated to Canada where George held a series of jobs. He later owned and operated several stores. George has volunteered his time at several organizations and spoken to hundreds of students about his Shoah, his Shoah experiences. He did so again last year at the age of 95. George is blessed with two sons and six grandchildren. Mr. Premier. George Fox. Just to uh, the, res the resilience uh, of our honorees is, is uh, incredible. Just to share a little anecdote with you, I know George. Um, two years ago, he bought a brand new car and insisted on getting the extended warranty. It's a kind of. Mr. Premier, uh, Leah Hockman. Leah Hockman Nee Zimmerman was born on December the 25th, 1921 in Pohorsk, Poland. In 1941, the Nazis shot and killed Leah's brother, Abraham, and sent her family to the Kormano ghetto. Leah and her brother Israel escaped and found their brother Harish and sister-in-law. They never saw other family members again. Distinguishing herself, disguising herself, sorry, as a Gentile, Leah worked at various farms living in constant fear. Leah survived bombs, hunger, bitter cold, and illness. She and Abraham Hockman married in 1947, moving to Montreal in 1959. When Abraham passed away in 1989, 
Leah moved to Toronto to be close to family. For nearly seven decades, she did not speak of the atrocities she had witnessed. In 2011, Leah shared her experiences publicly for the first time. At age 90, Leah continues to speak out about her Shoah experiences. She has three daughters, nine grandchildren, and 17 great-grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hava Quinta. Hava Quinta was born in Sosnovy, is that how it's pronounced? Sosnovitz, Poland in 1930. She survived the concentration camps in Widograben, Grossen, Bergen, Belsen. She then moved to Sweden for rehabilitation. Since the British rulers of Palestine would not allow Jewish immigration there, Hava obtained false documentation to land in Palestine. While working as a nurse there, she met and married Mike, an injured soldier. In 1963, the couple moved to Toronto. Hava worked at Baycrest as a registered nurse, caring for people with Alzheimer's. There, she organized Mother's Day parties for women, mostly Shoah survivors, with no surviving children, to ensure that they felt special. Hava attended night school to become a Jewish history teacher, graduating as the valedictorian of her class. She later wrote her autobiography, I'm Still Living, and has shared her story at many schools. Hava is blessed with three daughters and nine grandchildren. Congratulations. Mr. Premier, just before you do, Hava happens to be my first cousin. <laughs> Come on over here with your first cousin. Come on. Mr. Premier, Judy and George Lysies, and you've already heard that Judy is in the hospital and I join in wishing her a speedy recovery, but she's gonna be represented by her daughter. <laughs> Judy Lysi Niesinger was born in Kosice, Czechoslovakia in 1928. In March 1944, Judy's family was dispatched to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where she was a slave laborer. At age 16, Judy weighed a mere 65 pounds, was infested with lice, and had typhoid fever. George Lysi was born in 1916 on a farm near Nova Zamki, Czechoslovakia. After attending the College of Agriculture, he joined the military. Applying for a farmer's visa to Canada in 1938, he was rejected because he was a Jew. George served 45 months of forced labor in the Hungarian army. The conditions under which the Jewish soldiers served, extremely limited food rations, beatings, proximity to landmines, exposure to harsh weather, lack of medical care, were such that only one in 10 survived. For the remainder of the war, George posed as a Catholic in Budapest. Judy and George married in 1946, leaving Czechoslovakia a year later. The couple lived in Caracas, Venezuela, and moved to Canada in 1952. Judy was a clothing buyer for several stores, and George owned and managed several tobacco farms. Judy and George have visited schools throughout the GTA to share their Holocaust experiences. They are blessed with two daughters, three granddaughters, and five great-grandchildren.
Premier, please welcome Sarah Marmarek. As Sarah makes her way, allow me to introduce her. Sarah Marmarek Stupniki was born in Opatov, Poland, on November 12, 1922. She married her high school sweetheart, Saul Marmarek, in Opatov, the ghetto, in September 1939. Later, a pregnant Sarah was taken to the labor camp in Sandomiris, Poland sneaking out to a hospital to deliver a son who died shortly after from malnutrition. Sarah worked in the Radom Auschwitz and Abur, Abur Auschwitz camps. Miraculously, after two years of separation, Sarah and Saul were reunited in July 1945. Immigrating to Canada in June 1948, they settled in Toronto. Sarah worked with Saul to establish a successful construction business. She has volunteered her time for several organizations and charities. An inspirational film, Life of My Life, focusing on Sarah's time at Radom, was produced and is distributed to schools to foster Holocaust education. Sarah is blessed with a son and a daughter, four grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. Premier Sarah Marmurek. <clears throat> Mr. Premier Felix Apatowski. Felix? <laughs> Felix Apatowski was born on July the 15th, 1922, in Lodz, Poland. At 15, Felix smuggled goods out of the Lodz ghetto in exchange for food for a starving family and was later arrested. In Auschwitz, he maintained the fence wires and collected the bodies of prisoners who had electrocuted themselves on those wires. The camp's Polish underground recruited Felix as a messenger. On October the 7th, 1944, Felix and other prisoners blew up the crematoria. After being caught by the SS, Felix endured having his fingernails pulled out. Currently, Felix works on real estate and mortgage transactions in Ontario. He also speaks at schools about his Holocaust experiences, and the Azrieli Foundation recently published his autobiography, Gatehouse to Hell, his 2009 journey to the camps at which he had been uh, detained is told in the documentary, Following in the Footsteps of Felix Apatowski. Felix has four children, five grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. Please welcome Morris Rosenberg. <clears throat> Morris Rosenberg was born in Transylvania, Romania in 1930. After being captured in 1944 by the Nazis, Morris worked first in the Shilogwas Mayo ghetto. Did I pronounce that correctly? Silaj There you go. <laughs> this was a brick factory, then several camps, Auschwitz, Nieder Salzburg, Flossenburg, and uh, Bergen-Belsen. In 1946 and 1947, Morris returned to Hungary and Romania to try to find some surviving family members, but could not. And a few, late, few years later, after immigrating to Canada, he started a company in Toronto, Artex Garments Limited, which manufactured ladies' coats and suits. In 1968, Morris married Judy. After acquiring land in southwestern Ontario, Morris's company, Reisenberg Developments, developed numerous building lots and built many homes in Ontario. 
Morris then started Rostec Homes, which has built exclusively exclusive homes in Toronto for 12 years. He has supported many organizations and charities. Morris is blessed with two daughters and two grandchildren. Premier Morris Rosenberg. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations.